So after two months of usage with the um, the HP Dev One, I, yeah, it's not my primary system, but I'm still probably using it a couple hours a day. Um, just doing a walk around of the actual hardware, you can see it's it's really taken no real damage. Like just no chipping around the ports. The hinge is still perfectly good. The keyboard really doesn't show any wear. Um, and the screen, even though yeah, it's super reflective, it, it it doesn't have any scratches or anything like that. Even after um, the use of the last two months. All right. So during the first two months, um, they did release a firm couple firmware updates for the Dev One. And right here is what they actually fixed. When the computer initially came, it had a very loud fan speed. Like I don't know if you can hear it right now while recording. It's pretty low. Like it's not anything like major, but the fan got really high before. Um, even even when just doing like the lightest of tasks. So they actually released a, a firmware update that fixed that, and also one to fix the the LED. So that it would be breathing rather than uh, than just a solid yellow when uh, it was in standby. And then um, just want to talk about the recovery. This does have a recovery partition, and it does have an item on here. Like you see, I have to do an update because it had updates that came in. But it, with uh, Pop OS, it actually allows you to do an update, um, a recovery partition, where you can keep updating it so that say something catastrophic does happen you're actually able to bring your drive back basically to the last update which is a pretty unique feature I think um, as far as Linux distributions go I don't have anything like this in Zorin the backup doesn't necessarily do that so I thought that was a pretty cool feature of Pop OS How has my uh, experience with Pop OS been going? Uh, it's been going okay um, I did notice that this um this is someone compared to Zorn uses quite a bit more uh RAM in my normal everyday activities than, than my Zorn PC. I did the other video the other day and I was running OBS Studio and I had quite a few things open. You know, not my normal workload, I have my normal workload open right now, but it was only at like two point four gigs. And and even when I'm running my normal workload, it only gets up to about five point five gigabytes. And as you can see right here with um with Pop OS, I'm sitting at almost eight and a half gigabytes, and and this is not a full load. Like I'm only have one window open, and it's just a Google tab, um, on my browser. So I don't even have that loaded. I'm not running a a server like I was running. I was running a an an Angular server, even at two gigabytes on the the Zorn. So it does use a little bit more RAM, well, quite a bit more RAM, I should say, than the Zorn 16 build. Um, what is nice is the interface is very much like the Zorin 16. There's only a few differences, like having the windows up here in the corner, uh, when they're down the bottom on the Zorin uh, 16, but it, it took me a while to get used to the Zorin 16 interface. So getting over here to Pop OS, um, since they're both running the same, the same Dome version, I believe they're both running, uh, Gnome 42, the, um, the graphical user interface was a lot easier to get used to because I had already gotten used to it with, uh, with Zorin 16. So the overall experience has been going pretty good. Uh, just a few few minor things like it does use definitely more RAM uh, than the other Linux distro I run. Um, and there's an issue with some glitching in and I'll show that right now. All right, so one of the issues I've actually had, um, it's not really a big issue, but sometimes minusing windows or bringing windows back up, there's glitching. Uh, like if you see it right there, it just glitched when I brought it down, like a little flicker. And this doesn't happen all the time, but it's been happening basically since a lot in the last few updates. It does that glitching thing. All right, so I want to do a price comparison. Like if you're looking for laptops that are sold specifically with Linux or, or Mac OS. Um, and, and really why the Dev 1 is kind of in that spot where it's like price for performance is pretty much unbeatable at this point. If you look at the Dell XPS Plus, which is their newest system, with a similar configuration, keep in mind this has uh, Sardon RAM, it's $649. That's, you know, almost more than $500 more than right now the price of the Dev 1. Going to Lenovo, if their website actually worked, which it doesn't, uh, for whatever reason, once again they have Sardon RAM, and their price is $2,123, and that's actually with a 
with an Intel 11th gen. That's not even with a 12th gen at that price. Going on to the System76, um, the Lemur Pro is actually more, so I actually chose the Galago Pro for this example, but the Galago Pro in similar configuration is $492. This is the only other one that does come with an option for installing Pop! OS though, so you know, if you want to support them, they do have some uh, other features that may, may make it worth the price. It is the 12th gen processor, it does have core boot, um, and some other System76 specific stuff, like um, they have their own open source chips um, that they actually put into their systems. So it might be worth a little extra to go with the System76 if that's something that you're looking into. Um, of course, this is the Dev1. Dev1 is, like I said, still 1099 You know, 16 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte hard drive. It's a pretty good price. Um, the Starbook, going with their new uh, Ryzen option, it's actually pretty decent. It comes in at 1325. That system's a pretty decent system, so that's always the option too. Just keep in mind, a lot of times when you're ordering from from Star Labs, the the wait times are pretty long because they're a small company, so they don't necessarily get to release stuff as quick as the other ones I've just shown you. And then uh, the last one I wanted to compare here was the the new um, M2 MacBook Air. And that was actually the second most expensive. It's nowhere near what the Lenovo costs, but you know, you're talking $1,900 for a similar configuration as far as RAM and, and disk storage. So a quick update on the gaming. Uh, before I, I ran an example showing it just running in a uh, battery, but um, actually it's quite a big difference. If you plug in the system, like on Hollow Knight, it goes to 170 frames a second to over 220 frames per second. Uh, so that really wraps up the two month review. Um, I'll probably revisit this system probably around six to eight months, kind of like what I do with the Star Lab Starbook. So uh, stay tuned.